is uh, removal of the small amount of the water and other liquid generally we use uh, water as a solvent if another liquid like uh, acetone or benzene or uh, it is ethanol any solvent which may be required to be acting as a reaction medium in that case we are not going to have water it will become another solvent if you remove the water or any solvent by the application of the heat if small amounts are present we call it as a dry whereas it is in the large quantities of the water and making our diluted product into concentrated product we call it as a evaporation so in both the cases we are having a mass transfer and energy transfer so in this practical of major uh, we are going to see both energy and the masses and in the case of minor which you are going to have a mass into a critical account so we will be having first the minor part later onwards we are going to enter into major experiment so what is the application of uh, this process we have already seen it is used for the preservation of the drug products if water content is more the shelf life of that particular product is going to be less if tablet or capsules are present if you are taking any granules or powdered doses form so there the pharmacopoeia gives the minimum amount of the wash moisture allowed if you are having moisture other than that your preservation and the stability of the drug product will be hindered so when it is getting affected so we need to bring back to original requirement of our pharmacopoeia in that case we are going to apply this unit operation so it is also going to have a improved characteristic like a flow we are going to prepare a tablet we are pumping our powder or a granule from hopper to individual punches so where you are going to get a tab tablet or we are going to put our powder in a sachets like you know what you are doing um, another one is capsules where you are filling powder in the empty gelatin capsules and we are going getting a capsules in all the cases free flow is required characteristic it will be improved by the material which is having a dry state otherwise it will wet to the or sticking to the containers or uh, doses forms or packaging it will not be proper obviously it is used in the preparation of bulk drugs where the basic drug is prepared from by using intermediates and raw materials from uh, different uh, solvent or a mixture of solvents where we are going to remove them then we are going to get a dry product of course improved handling will be easy because when you are removing a water or a solvent it will reduce the height and it it will become a less weight and uh, freight charges when in, during the transportation also very less so it is easy for handling also so for these purposes we are going to use drying operation so it is a basic unit operation in the preparation of granules when you are preparing granule by the wet granulation where wet granules are required to be made into a dry granule whenever we are going to drying chapter we need to understand the backdrop of it so that we are taking a little bit more care for with certain materials because water as a solvent is existing two forms one is bound form another one is unbound form so when it is present in bound form it is going to be uh, giving a trouble to a pharmacist to make it completely dry let us see what is the bound form of a solvent or water it is a minimum water held by the material that exerts the equilibrium water pressure less than the pure water at the same temperature so what do you understand with this statement if you keep the water outside at the same atmospheric pressure and uh, temperature if pure water is exerting more water vapor pressure whereas it is present with the solid it is exerting less equilibrium vapor pressure it indicates that the solvent or water is having a interaction with the solid and you need to apply the more heat to get dried because it is in the proper form of a bound because when it is a bound in nature we need to apply more energy to break the bonds between the solvent and solid and it is going to give us a trouble in unit operation of drying so we need to see those categorize those materials in our pharmaceutical industry so we do take care of them and we employ a different equipment that shoots particular combination of solvent and the solid there is another form of the liquid which will be present is unbound water this unbound water is amount of water by the material that exerts equilibrium vapor pressure equal to that of pure water same it means the water is present in the pre form and it is not having any bondage so the vapor pressure of the pure liquid at the same temperature or the liquid which present in the solid they exert the same vapor pressure so there will not be any trouble to dry those materials it is having a unbound water because 
unbound water generally present in the voids of the sol solid why do you know that there is a gap between the solid and so uh, another solid material so the gap obviously present in the case of sphere you, uh, you 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 will be having without any skip that voids so if the material is having voids in that water is present in that voids so it is in the unbound state it is as good as free water which is present outside so you don't have any problem to dry such materials so generally we categorize the, our material into hygroscopic material where drying is going to be a problem because they will be having a bound water so they absorb the moisture from atmosphere and they held with them so this is actually a critical problem if you are having such a hygroscopic material or bound water in the sample even if you dry also again they catch the moisture from the atmosphere again they will be getting wet this is the problem which you are going to face if you observe critically in the rainy season your table salt it will become wet it does not mean that somebody is sprinkling a water or rainy drops are falling on that the reason is the salt which is present on the table it will absorb the environmental moisture and because of the hygroscopic nature they will become wet even if you keep the dry solid also and it will become a problem this same will be applicable to our pharmaceutical industry also our pharmaceutical powders when they are kept to open they tend to absorb the moisture even though they are dried they will be again become wet this problem is always present that will be acting as a degradation pathway and we are going to have less self life this problem we need to avoid by keeping a closed container you may be having uh, different types of container in the first year so completely closed container hermetically sealed container in those one we are completely avoiding atmosphere vapors to enter into our bottle so non hygroscopic material they present the water in the void spaces they are present in unbound state so they are having a free moisture to get evaporated so that we will be having a dry of the drying of the particular material very easy what we have already seen this background it will allow you to categorize all for pharmaceutical powders into two categories the powders which are existing with bound water and the powder which are existing with the unbound water you may be also having hygroscopic materials and material which will be having with different solvents and hydrates if you say the epsom salt that is magnesium sulfate it is existing with 7h2 it it is generally present is in bondage with seven water molecules so if you want to remove that seven molecules it is very tough at the same time if you remove and make the product anhydrous also they catch again they will go to back to hydrate state of mgso4 7h2 this is actually intrinsic uh, characteristic of a material that makes the particular material to have certain moisture but our pharmacopoeia says if uh, moisture presence is going to degrade our product we need to dry them with lesser than the moisture content what they put as a requirement or a limit so in those cases we are employing drying equipment most of the times whenever we are doing this practical we are going to estimate one is emc that is equilibrium moisture content another one is fmc that is free moisture content both together we call it as a tmc that is total moisture content it means total moisture content of any sample is equal to emc plus cmc fmc sorry so what is the concept of cmc now we are going to have in this practical to learn all these concepts and determine them and report them as a our observation and inference and this is going to be a part of our major experiment i hope you understand the preamble of it so the emc is the amount of water present in the solid which exerts the vapor pressure equal to that of vapor pressure of the atmosphere surrounding in it so it is very much critical and it is going to give us a trouble in drying you may be getting the question that why we are listening at and doing it this practical practical because it has got very great importance in pharmaceutical industry if you would give the task to your subordinate he will be keep on drying and shifts are over and they will not get dry material and you will ask another shift person he says that i am not able to get the material dried less than the pharmacopoeia limit so you keep on doing why it is happening reason is when the material is having emc con uh, concentration that is equilibrium moisture content 
more than the desired whatever we want to have a limit you can't dry that material reason is when it is exerting the vapor pressure equal to that atmosphere your drying is zero you can't get drying i will give you an example in the rainy season you are putting cloths on the outside and it takes two hour two days three days the reason is why your cloths are not getting dried even you are not exposing to the rain reason is the atmosphere is already having saturated with the water vapor in the form of humidity so both vapor pressures are same so it won't get dry whereas in the dry season it will get evaporated easily so this is actually a concept making as very much critical if you want to dry the material less than the emc con uh, content that is equilibrium moisture content you need to again change the parameters of temperature or air speed or any vacuum any another parameter or change the equipment itself otherwise you can't get material dry the another concept what we are uh, talking about is <clears throat> fmc fmc is a free moisture content it is the amount of that uh, free to amount of the water that free to get evaporated don't get confused in this slide it is mentioned water means we are going to have only water as a solvent sometime we are going to have acetone or maybe ethanol or methanol or any material which we are using as a solvent it may be present why it is been given as a water because it is a net solvent and preferably we use unless otherwise it is mandated or it is uh, required we use water only as a material okay in the fmc con uh, concept it is free to evaporate so there will not be any problem just like your unbound water it is free to evaporate it will be getting dried easily now there are two calculations and equations are present the top one is applicable to minor experiment and the bottom one is applicable to major experiment i have already mentioned you write only in one experimental part only otherwise you are going to repeat the same thing twice i don't want you to do that so write the same experiment you put both the data of minor and major in the same experiment so the top one is a loss on drain this is very good concept which will give you as how much is the water lost from my wet sample in the percentage so if you see the formula the ma mass of the water lost in the sample and whatever the unit you are using mks or cgs unit so that you are putting here we are using the mks then it is kg if it is a cgs we are going put going to put as a grams generally uh, kgs are very good uh, linked to your pharmaceutical industry and large scale but in our lab generally we prefer to use in grams only we don't employ kg because you are lending it we don't want to throw our material in dustbin so kgs of material are you are using grams the concept what you are learning is same so we use the cgs units for this particular practical so what you are going to report is in grams only because you are using a small petri dish and drying bottle these are all going to accommodate only in the grams so do remember that mo most of our major experiment we have reported in standard international system or mks units but this practical we are going to report in cgs units but you see in the numerator and denominator both are kg only don't change our hybrid unit like top is kg bottom is uh, grams that will make a lot of error in the result so the mass of water in the grams that is lost from the sample that is in the denominator is the total mass of the wet sample which is going to be solid and water so you are converting this into percentage and the second concept is called as a drying rate drying rate is how much is the weight of the water lost from the sample per unit time per unit area and per unit weight of the solid so this is actually what we are uh, having as a major experiment this you are going to calculate at different times and you are going to plot in a graph so that is the reason this major experiment is always going to be having a graph so we are having two material which is given in the pci syllabus one is a starch another one is calcium carbonate as a materials so they are uh, less toxic and generally you are going to use them and these materials will be behaving in different manner so you may be getting either sample of starch or a calcium carbonate or blend of it by the external examiner you are going to do the practical and report the drying rate so uh, this one i think you are able to understand till now if you are having any problem or you want to ask any question at this stage 
you are most welcome because we are going to go going to a experimental part where we are going to see each value how they are going to be represented and how to make a data converted into a table how to convert the table into a graph this is all which we are going to discuss now not only this practical if you have got any doubts for the next practical or previous practical you can ask one thing i would like to make it in links i have already kept what is the portion of the syllabus for the first sessional in the first sessional syllabus i will show you after this particular class is over or you can access from the google classroom there it is given as a links in that links i have given the portion for the practical first session and portion for the second session so the corresponding one which you are going to take it for the first session and for the first session examination which you are going to have from 6 to i think your exam is falling on friday we are going to have that exam 10 to 12 be ready you are going to have as usual one synopsis uh, google form will be present why why you will be asked and this synopsis will be having a 10 marks and you will be given 20 minutes for major experiment and 10 minutes for the minor experiment and a small problem will be given in major and descriptive will be present in the minor experiment so this is the one which you are going to have 10 marks and 5 marks is minor 15 plus 10 marks is synopsis 20 25 and uh, 10 marks is viva 35 marks which is present but you have got Uh, this is the sessional examination you are going to have um, 40 marks divided by 4 you are going to have a 10 as usual what you have done in the first year in the similar format you are having 10 marks which are made into two first session and second session and average we are going to take them and five is a continuous assessment i hope you all submitted some of the mails i am going to get your assignments have been uh, receive, received but still Uh, some people have not submitted their assignments they are going to lose the continuous marks mode that is uh, that they need to uh, submit them so i am going to the second part of our major is a graphical part just to you see the graph will be presented like this <clears throat> on the screen you are having a graph if you see this particular one it is containing four stages in this particular graph but only the thing is the moisture content in this graph is presenting from the left right to left generally you represent moisture content zero to high that is a left to right but the curve in your practical is going to be get reversed but the inter interpretation of the data if you see it the drying rate curve is going to have a four types of the stages one is a initial adjustment stage the initial adjustment stage you are seeing at the a or a dash and between b a and b this is actually what the initial adjustment is in the initial adjustment what you are doing you are making your uh, drying taking place in the oven the oven is going to supplied with uh, one fan and temperature knob so you are setting your temperature in the stage of initial adjustment you are going to have drying and condensation the material is getting dried and the moisture is again falling back, back to the sample because of that you are having drying rate low and higher it is going to fluctuate this is called as a initial adjustment after the initial adjustment is over and the dryer got saturated and come to equilibrium then you will have a constant rate period that is called as bc the constant rate period where the drying rate is same in spite of your moisture content is getting decreased so after particular point of time all your surface moisture and free moisture is going to get decreased and you are attaining the c that is called as a critical moisture content after that it is going to fall drying rate is slowly getting decreased because the material is holding some water it is delaying to evaporate that is the reason you are going to have a slope lesser and it is going to fall the drying rate after a particular point of the time the material outside is will become very hard and some more time is going to get from the material which is present inside the core it will travel by the diffusion it takes further more time and the drying rate will fall further so the cd is called as a stage of first falling and d is called as a second falling period these four stages are present in your drying rate curve you need to explain in your theory also this particular question and in your practical also you are going to have all the four stages which may be appearing in your exam or not 
we don't know because you are going to get a different sample so sometimes you may be ending with the initial adjustment you are not even coming to first uh, uh, falling sometimes you are going to end up with your uh, constant rate period initial adjustment after that you are getting a constant so few cases if your sample weight is very less and water content is low you are going to reach the e not only this were deviation of moisture content sometimes your material will be behaving directly your first rating first falling and second falling may be in your sample so in those cases you will be having a straight fall and making it to a zero e but there are two points which are very much critical in this particular drying rate curve is cmc that is the material moisture content after c your material is having a first falling another point is called as a e that is called as a equilibrium moisture content where your drying rate is zero at a particular moisture content your drying rate is zero so this e one is the critical one which we are going to see both c and e that is critical moisture content and equilibrium moisture content in the major experiment so how to make it and i will explain with the uh, graph before entering into the graph i would like to show the equipment part of it while how we are doing the same tray dryer what we have used in the theory is going to be used in this particular case also the tray dryer which is having a hot air continuously circulated and causes the forced uh, convection and uh, heating takes place uh, through the coils which are present in the uh, tray dryer in the case of pharmaceutical industry steam is used and the solids are placed in the trays we are going to use a petri dish as a circular tray or you can use uh, any trays of metal or glass simultaneously the moisturizer is removed partially and slowly it will be getting dried till it is reaching to our desired moisture content so if you see the figure of it this is having different trays in this diagram you are seeing four trays and material is spread in a particular thickness if the thickness is very high you may may be having a delay in observing in the four stages if thickness is very less and material dried is very low you may be observing all stages in less span of time generally it may be given in your exam like uh, uh, do the drying experiment for 1 hour or 1 and 1/2 hours or up to 60 minutes or 90 90 minutes for that purpose you are preparing a sample and the vent sample is prepared by you only and keeping in the dryer and uh seeing how the moisture content is getting affected and observing the data and plotting the curve now we will see the experimental part how to acquire that in the drying rate curve we are using the petri dish that you are using already in microbiology laboratory that is circular glass petri dish that we are using it is a tray we are going to take the weight of it that is called as a w1 w1 is 48.75 grams what we have got seen in this particular slide the second one is the diameter of the dish the diameter of the dish which we are going to take it by using vernier calipers and we are going to take internal diameter of the petri plate and this is actually 9.6 cm and the radius of the dish you know that it is d by 2 you are going to get r so 4.8 cm area of the petri plate you are going to get as a pi r square as the area so pi is 222 by 7 4.8 and 4.8 you are getting 72.34 cm square as i already mentioned we are going to use cgs units so centimeters grams and uh, this we are going to use it here after the weight of this uh, diameter and area calculation and weight is over we are going to put our sample in that what you are going to get from your laboratory attendant what external examiner has given to you that sample weight will be given to you and you are going to put in that weight then you will be getting sample plus dish then you are going to add water and your that water is going to be mixed with sample and you are going to weigh water plus solid plus dish that is actually a w3 so the w3 is 61.9690 so this one you are subtracting with dish and the sample 50.460 you are going to get a water content what you have added that is the freest moisture content it is free to get evaporated 11.23 grams you know the weight of the sample that is w4 by using the formula w2 minus w1 you are getting 1.71 grams 
so the solid and water we are adding intentionally and mixing it making it in a slurry and it is a wet solid and putting in the dryer and we are going to take from the dryer this plate every 15 minutes note down the weight of it so it will be keep on decreasing as the water is getting evaporated and you are going to calculate that loss on drying by using the formula water content lost per unit weight of the sample and per unit area and per unit per unit time but the loss on drying which you are going to calculate at different time points like at 60 minutes 90 minutes like that you can calculate or half an hour by taking the plate and observing the how much is the water lost divided by total weight of the wet sample that is sample plus water into 100 so this is what we are going to do for the loss on drying that is minor experiment whereas the drying rate curve which we are going to use it in the loss of the water per unit gram unit weight of the dry sample per unit area per unit time so how to do that the second part which we are going to see in this particular table so if you are able to observe till minor experiment that is loss on drying and i will explain in this also and i am going to explain drying rate curve also from this table and major experiment is going to be having graphs whereas the minor experiment which is going to be having the only calculation and reporting of lod so come back to our data portion and interpretation portion and plotting portion this will be given explained in this particular table you see here so the drying rate curve data which is present in this table which is containing different columns that is 1 2 3 4 columns in the top they are all called as columns and in the left side you have got a rows that is serial number 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 like that you have got a rows the columns are present here nine columns around seven rows are present in this particular table okay now the first column is serial number and how many sample weights you have taken that one is the first column and 1 2 3 4 7 is present and there are seven rows in the first column and the second column is containing drying time that is starting with zero you are noting down this top watch and after that you are taking every 15 minutes and taking the sample out so that is given as 0 15 30 45 60 75 and 90 and you are going to have 105 and uh, 120 like that it is keep on going 15 minutes time interval after every time interval you are taking the petri plate out and measuring its weight initially it is containing 61 odd grams after that it is going to become lesser and lesser and it is becoming 57.88 grams at 90 minutes it means from 61.690 to 57.88 water is lost because remaining calcium carbonate is non volatile petri plate is non volatile it won't evaporate only water is getting lost that is the reason we are going to calculate how much is the weight of the water and the sample what you have got by taking w3 minus w1 you are going to have the value of weight of the water press sample so this you are going to get in the fourth column in the fifth column you subtract this this weight minus w4 that is weight of the solid then you will get only water so this is the water which is present at every time point of 0 to 90 minutes this is fifth column so this much is water is going to be present and we are going to calculate how much is the water lost per gram per unit area per unit time now onwards so this is being done by the sixth column <clears throat> generally if you have been asked the question minor experiment no need to repeat up to six, uh, beyond 5 up to 5 is sufficient so you have been asked the question report the loss on drying at 60 minute by taking the fifth column you know that at 50 minute only 8.74 grams of water is present initially 11.23 grams is present so 11.23 minus 8.74 at 60 minute you will get a water lost divided by total initial weight of the sample initial weight of the sample that is water plus uh, calcium carbonate that is sample is 12.94 so multiplied with 100 you will be getting a percentage so that percentage is actually called as a lod that is loss on drying this is minor if you have been asked the question at 75 you will be getting another weight 
and you are getting 90 another weight at 30 another 45 another like that loss on drying is varying from the time to time and you are going to take how much is the water loss divided by the total wet sample into 100 so this part is over for the minor if you are getting major experiment the same data you are going to take sixth column in the sixth column you have got weight of the water remained per gram of the dry powder which will be taken by the equation 11.23 that is present in the fifth column divided by weight of the sample that is 1.71 gram in the denominator and you are going to get a 6.56 every uh, row that is a uh, water content present in the every row is divided by the weight of the powder so you are going to get your weight of the water remained per gram of your dry powder so you are taking that particular weight divided by solid weight that is sample dry sample weight so you are going to get a ratio of how much it is present and in the seventh column you are going to present how much is the water lost per gram per gram per minute so this will be calculated by taking the initial weight of the water which is present that is zero that is will be given by the 6 n minus 1 Minus what is the six and minus one in the second column uh, in the seventh column is sixth indicates the sixth column n minus one is indicating the row so in the first row you don't have any n minus one row you don't have any zero row or it is one row previous to that we are starting with zero minute that is the reason you don't have any row before that that is the reason you don't have any value you can't define it so you are putting as a dash <clears throat> but in the second row you have got in the sixth column second row n minus 1 is actually 11.23 which you are going to have so this 11.23 which you are having minus you are going to have sixth column nth row is 10.6 so this difference divided by what you have got so what you are going to get is the sixth column at that particular uh, previous row minus that row divided by time time is 2n that is second column and nth row is 15 here so you are going to put a 15 and second column n minus 1 row is 0 because in the second column n minus 1 n is 15 n minus 1 previous row is 0 so 15 minus 0 is 15 so in the denominator you are going to have a 15 and you are going to get this seventh column all the values so this will be getting how much is the water lost per gram per you per minute so you are converting that into hours because minutes if you are taking it it is taking eight hours uh, uh, sample so to dry if you are taking too much of time then the minutes will be in hundreds so you need to convert into hours so you are multiplying with the same thing into 100 how much is the 100 you are going to get so the minute column of the seventh you are multiplying with 60 you are going to get a how much is the water lost per hour at the end you are uh, taking this column of eighth and you are dividing by the area area is 72.34 you are dividing area and you are going to get a per unit area so in the last column you are going to get a drying that is water lost per unit time per unit time of hour per unit area and per unit weight that is a dry weight so of a sample so you are going to get in the last column this ninth column you are taking in the y axis and free moisture content on the x axis you are going to plot so note down this small piece of paper or your notebook you are going to take fifth column on the x axis and ninth column on the y axis and the plot the curve and report the result you are in which stage initial adjustment or constant or first falling or second falling and report the result this is actually called as drying rate experiment